Hey! Hello creative people! So today I wanted to show you how I make clay dishes. And without further ado, let's get started! I didn't want to start this video with a struggle, but oh well, this is the life I'm living, so enjoy me opening the clay pack. And once the war with packaging is finished, I start kneading it. And just so we are clear, it's air dry clay now, it's not polymer clay, so you will need to be a little bit faster or you will need to have a pot of water nearby to wet your hands so the clay won't dry before you finish sculpting. As a disclaimer, I want to say I'm doing it for my very very first time, so please do not judge me. And as you see, I made kind of very wonky pancake here on my glass plate and now I'm trying to cut the moon shape out of it and yeah let's hope that everything will go out as I planned but we will see. Okay so as the moon shape is quite nice I like it's kind of crescent moon but because it's a ring dish or jewelry dish or trinket dish whatever you want to call it or just a clay dish I want to have some borders around it so things which I'm putting in not gonna fall off. So I'm trying to make that and corners so far seems like a challenge for me. So if you know the tips, if you know how to do it easier, please let me know. And I think people will also would like to read the comment where it's written properly how to do stuff. But me, I'm just trying here. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying and I'm learning on the go. Okay, and once I am more or less happy with smoothness and shape of it, I will try to move it out of my glass blade and put it somewhere safe and calm into area where I'm not touching, just to dry it. And as usually, I think that air dry clay dries within one day, but because the piece is so big, I think that I will leave it for longer, maybe three days. I don't know, see how it goes, where you live, the temperature, the humidity, all those things. I need to be considered. And as you see, I'm doing quite a lot of handwork, but I don't know if I'm really that successful because I think I made that pancake a little bit too thin, but yeah, I managed to lift it safely without breaking it, and I think that's already a big achievement. Okay, now round number two. I'm doing exactly the same pancake, well, not exactly the same, but similar kind of pancake, and now I will try to cut out the perfect circle shape, and for that I am using my watercolor water dish, glass, whatever, where I'm cleaning my brushes, and so far, look at, look at that, it's perfect circle. And again, as it's supposed to be a dish for trinkets, for stuff, I like it to have a little bit lifted edges, so I will try to make it just slightly rolled into the inside of the bowl of the dish and yeah i'm using my fingers i'm trying to make it as nice as i can but it was not successful so i tried to make the circle again and now i am rolling the snake out of clay and i will put it all the way around my circle on the edges and i hope that fingers crossed this will work better And yeah, then I was doing my research about how to do clay things. I noticed that people doing this like roughening of the clay, so maybe it should help to catch together, to adhere the clay two pieces to have together. And yeah, I tried that. Is it working or not now? I cannot tell because it's not finished yet. And yeah, I mean, it looks better, definitely, that's for sure. But I think this blending thing might be a better idea than just using my fingers because, you know, they are too big for some things. And now I think I'm quite happy how smooth or as much as smooth I made it. And I think I'm not gonna torture it anymore. I'm just using my utility knife to very carefully lift it out of the glass because I have this problem. I'm working it on the glass and then after I'm having such a terrible pain to remove it from it. But you know, you learn and you try and you improve next time. 
And talking about the next time, this is the last design I'm gonna do and we can see how much of improvement I made or I haven't made. Well, I must say that it takes a while and usually takes me to look back at the videos to see where my mistakes are made. So when I'm voiceovering, yes, I see where mistakes are made and what can be done different. But when I'm doing it, I'm just like so much into it that I'm completely losing my mind and I'm just going with the flow and what I think might work or might not and I'm just like doing trial and error all the time. And as you see for this last clay dish I forgot that I need to roughen up the surface so I peeled off and put back the strawberry leaves as I imagine and I, f I hope that they will stick better and you see as you see I'm just trying and seeing what's going on. However, what I learned from the past is that snake as a border works much better than just trying to wrap it up with fingers. This is what I'm doing it again, the same as the circled one and our strawberry will look amazing, I think. And probably the most satisfying part for me is just to make those little details on this because I really wanted to make it as realistic, well, not really as realistic, but like 3D looking as much as possible. And working with clay, it actually allows you because it is a 3D material and I just found it very fun to work with it. Also, I wanted to thank you for watching this video. It really means so much for me. And also, if you have some suggestions, what should I make next or what should I show next, please let me know in the comments below. And here you see how it looks when it's dry. And it's been three or four days since I left them. And now I'm using acrylic paint to paint on it. So I started firstly with the circle, which I decided will be a kiwi fruit. And I'm putting the inside color first and and also I'm sure I will need to do several coats. However, if you have a prime gesso or something like that, you can use that and maybe the one coat will be enough. But well, it happens to be that I lost my gesso. I don't know where it is and I have no clue when I search entire house, but it's gone. Well, I mean, it's gone forever probably. I'll just decided that I will use couple coats. So as our project is in its last stage almost now, I wanted to thank you again for watching and please don't forget to subscribe if you like this channel, if you like this video and if you would like to see more videos like that. And uh, yeah, and also press that notification bell button so you know every time I'm uploading. OMG, I really really love how those strawberry leaves ended up. It looks so beautiful and so almost realistic. It kind of reminds me of those old things. I don't know if you had it, but my grandmother had uh, used to have a uh, plates on the wall. It's like decorative plates and they used to have fruit and veggies in it like usually in the kitchen and they kind of look similar to that and I'm not sure if I want to put it on my kitchen wall but I think it's pretty cute and kind of reminds me childhood in a way. <laughs> but let's go back to the topic. Well as you see there was some green shadow, green residue showing from under the red and I really don't know what to do with that so I decided that I will put white on top, wait until it's dry and paint red again. And so far it seems like it worked quite well.
And the last but not least is the Crescent Moon, which I decided to do all in black for something different. And it's not cute yet, and it's gonna be more like a sophisticated look as I imagined to begin with, and we will see how it will end up. Also, I dug out extremely old acrylic paint with some glitter in it, and I'm wondering, will it be visible on clay later on or not? When the black paint is dry, I opened some gold ink and I'm trying to draw some stars on it for some mystical and magical look. And finally, the last stage, I'm gonna cover it all in Mod Podge. If you don't have Mod Podge, you can use any kind of clay glazing varnishing you wanna use. It cannot be nail varnish because nail varnish is for nails only and you please remember that because I can't stand anyone who's saying otherwise. And yeah, you just cover it up and it looks all ugly and white, but it will clear up later on when it will dry. The only thing I would suggest is to wait until your paint job is completely dry and it has no smudging left in it because otherwise you may ruin all your design. Other than that, I think you just wait until it's dry, which will take up to one hour and you can enjoy your beautiful clay dishes. Okay, so how did it go? Mobe, how did it go? He's not speaking to me for some reason. So first layer is the circle one, the kiwi one. Can you see it? It's actually quite wonky, but in the same way quite nice. I forgot to paint the backs, but that's fixable. Yeah, so this is the one. The second one I done is strawberry, which looks like that. And yeah, I don't know, is it like really functional clay dishes? but it was my first attempt and I am happy with it. And the last one is the moon. I had a little bit of the shit show going on because I forgot to tell. Remember I was doing the gold ink and now as you see, it's all smudged up. Yeah, because the I painted with acrylic paint, which is waterproof when they are dry and I used a water-based gold ink, which is not waterproof when it's dry. And once I put the Mod Podge on it, it all smashed up. Or I didn't wait until it's dry completely, that's one or another. So either make sure it's completely dry or use not water-based or water-resistant paint afterwards. So yeah, as I said, I'm not sure are they really functional as a clay dishes for your jewelry or whatever, but I really had some fun making it. And yeah, I think it's not the last time. I think I will try to do it again. Maybe I will improve myself a little bit. And yeah, thank you for watching and see you next time. Don't forget to press this button and subscribe for my channel. Bye.